Today I've got a pretty significant Raptor 2 update. I've made a lot of progress since the last video and I've got quite a lot to show you. So as I'm recording this video, the Raptor 2 car is currently printing on the Prusa Mark III. There are quite a lot of parts to print, as you can imagine, and I think the total print time for everything is around seven days. I'm printing most of the larger parts at 0.15 millimeter layer height, which I think is gonna be fine for those, but I am printing some other parts in a lot finer resolution, such as the knuckles and the suspension arms, since a finer resolution does tend to add a little bit of strength. So this is probably the last thing you would have seen here on YouTube was the test block. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you definitely won't have seen more than this. The purpose of the test block basically was to learn about the design. And I definitely learned a lot from printing this. And what I'll say is that whenever you're designing something in CAD that's fairly complex or quite a large model, you always want to create these kind of prototypes as you go, mainly due to the tolerances of 3D printing. And for something like this, most of the parts are going to be okay and they're going to fit together fine. But certain things like the gears, for example, the gears need to be fitted together pretty much perfectly. Otherwise, you're going to have drag there and all sorts of friction that you don't want. So there's certain parts of the design that need to be really dialed in. And the test block allowed me to get that right. So what I did was I took what I learned from the test block, came back to my design, and I've implemented those changes. And that's what you can see here. So I did make a few changes. I increased the width here between the two um, center blocks, just so it's easy to put the motors in and out. There's a few other changes I did as well, but basically it's looking good. And once I was happy with this, I decided to move on to the rest of the car, which I'll show you now. So there it is, this is the Raptor 2 design. And I've brought everything together here. And as a prototype now, it's pretty much done. So if I angle it around a bit, you can really see what's on the car. So I've got the four ESCs here at the back where there'll also be a power distribution board. That's there so that I can connect the battery to a single board and have it split the power between four ESCs. In the center here, we've got the battery and I do also have a lid for that because we want to keep the battery nice and safe. If the car was to tip over or anything like that, you don't want to puncture that battery. That would be a bad time. Toward the front as well, we've also got the STM32 microcontroller, which is that big green board you can see. I've also created a little battery hub here for it, since we do need to power that with two AA's. They should last a very, very long time. And what I like about that is that I can have a little toggle switch on the top of the microcontroller box. So that if anything ever goes wrong with the car or you need to switch it off really quickly, you can just hit that one switch and it cuts everything. Obviously at the front there we have two servos and the steering system. And I'm going to go into detail on that a little bit later on. You can also see here as well, I've accounted for the cables. So I've got these kind of tunnels that travel underneath the battery pack, underneath the microcontroller, so that I can get all the way to the other side of the car. Remember that the two motors at the front here are still getting their power from these ESCs at the back of the car. And given that I'm using four three-phase motors, there's definitely going to be a lot of cables. And I've always kept in mind with this design that I want it to be as clean as possible and that means keeping the cables tidy and keeping them safe as well. I just don't want it to look messy, I want it to look really clean, really presentable and well thought out and I think I'm going to achieve that. One thing you will probably also be able to tell is that I finally managed to model those Proline Trencher wheels. That was definitely a challenge and modeling that tire tread was interesting to say the least. If you remember back in the last video, I was experimenting with drive shaft couplers printed in PETG. I experienced many breakages during testing and decided that PETG just was not feasible. Since then, I've even experimented with Polymax Polycarbonate, which is a very strong filament. I'm extremely impressed with that. It was so strong, in fact, that my cheap steel dog bones gave out first and the plastic was still intact. After experiencing these breakage issues, I've pretty much concluded that 3D printing axles for this particular project is a bad idea. There's far too much torque involved, and in all honesty, it would also really limit the steering angle to around 20 degrees, which is quite a significant impact on the car's overall performance. Going forward, what I'll be doing is using steel CV joints. Not only will this reduce breakages and maintenance, but it'll also provide a much higher steering angle of at least 35 degrees. One other thing I learned from the test block was that I needed to add more caster to the car. So on the test block when I mounted the wheel, what I noticed was you're always going to have a little bit of wobble when you mount a wheel to an RC car, just because of the way you have to mount it using one nut. But basically that little bit of wobble can sometimes be enough to cancel out your caster, especially if you're not at a high steering angle. 
So to combat this, what I've done is now increase the caster from 10 degrees to 15 degrees. And I think this is gonna work much better. So back to the steering system. I was quite limited here in terms of what I could do, just because of the way the motors are set up and the kind of limited space I have in terms of maneuverability. And if I'd implemented something here like I had in Raptor 1, like the Belcrank steering system, I would have run into a few issues and I actually tested it out first and it just wasn't, it wasn't good enough. The motor actually comes inwards quite a distance from the axles. So what that would mean is that to connect the bell crank system to the knuckles, you'd have to have a push rod that was traveling at an angle to the knuckle. What that means is when you pull the knuckle towards the car and you turn and right, the tire of your wheel is gonna hit the steering rod pretty early on and it limits you to a steering angle of around 15 to 20 degrees. And for me, that was just a write off. I did not want that. You know, steering is fairly important and the more of it you have, the more fun you can have. So I wanted to make sure I could have a reasonable steering angle for this car. In order to combat this kind of design issue, what I've done is I've had to think outside the box a little bit and go for something completely different. Each front wheel now has its own dedicated servo. Personally, I think this is an excellent idea and it'll allow for some really interesting features within the control system. If you think of all the opportunities this presents, I think it's really potentially quite powerful. You could even do things like adjusting the toe of the wheels while driving, much like you see in the dual axis steering system on the Mercedes F1 car. I can essentially do that in software automatically. And I can do it using the steering angle alone, or I can use additional sensors like accelerometers and gyroscopes, which are already on board this microcontroller that I'm using. Generally, from my understanding of it, for better cornering, you want the toe of the wheels to be slightly outwards. But on straight lines, when you want more stability and better straight line speed, you want to pull the toe of the wheel slightly inwards. I think this is going to be a really cool thing to test out and I'm excited to do that. I'll also be able to implement Ackerman steering as well. So I can just do that as an algorithm. I can do the calculations and apply the correct angles to each wheel. So if I give you a quick demo of the steering system, it can be a little bit laggy because this project's getting so big in Fusion 360. So I'll give it a go and see how it turns out. Hopefully it'll work. So if I pull the saver here, you can see the wheel does turn. And that's the maximum it'll go. So that's a reasonable steering angle and you can see the caster working there as well. So if I come back the other way, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm gonna be using the STM32 microcontroller. And if you're interested in how I'm gonna use that and why it's important, I'll leave a card to a video above that I've created in the past. One thing I wanna emphasize is that this board needs to be programmed and configured to communicate with the other hardware that I'll be using. This process can take some time and it's not as simple as a regular RC car where you just plug and play. What I'm doing here is I'm developing a, a pretty intelligent embedded system with sensors and eventually I want it to have a user interface and a screen and I'm really going to develop this thing over time. I'll be doing all the programming myself in embedded C on STM32 using STCubeMX. That is also something that I'll be sharing in the form of these update videos. If there's anything specific that you'd like me to cover or if you've got any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below and I'll try and address them in future videos. So that's it for this update. As I said, I've made a lot of progress since the last video. The car is currently printing and the next update you get will probably be the assembly of the entire car. From there, we can start testing the hardware. I'm gonna start building the encoders and pretty much just putting all the pieces together and start going through those testing processes. Interestingly as well, now that I have a CNC milling machine, I'll be able to mill my own PCBs. And that's gonna become very handy for the encoders because they're gonna need a very small PCB and also the power distribution boards. PCBs always tend to be a lot cleaner and a lot smaller than any other kind of prototype boards that you can create. This car will be running very soon and I know a lot of you are really keen to see it in action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna order a GoPro and I'm gonna mount it to the car. So that way I'll be able to capture a lot of that test footage. And I think that'll be really valuable. So until then, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next video.